My name is Denise Schipper and with my colleague Sarah van Kerkvoorde and we are content designers at the content studio, Studio Lauter. And that's a studio based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And what we do, that is we create unforgettable visitor experiences. Mostly we do this for museums, but also other places that tell a story, like visitor centers or science centers. Today I will show you and explain a bit about two award-winning projects, Johan Maurits in the Maurits House and the family exhibit in the National Museum of Qatar. Uh, we are going to explain how you can use emotion design to invoke the emotions of your visitor while designing exhibitions or multimedia. But why do you want to do that? Why do you want to invoke the emotions of your visitor? Well, you don't want this. You don't want to have a bored visitor. You want this. A visitor that enjoys his or her time and really is engaged into the story you want to tell. And that's quite difficult to do. It starts with facts. Museums have the location, they have the objects, they have the art pieces. And behind the, all these objects and art pieces is information. There is the facts. But how do you get this information to your visitor? How do you this in, do this in a meaningful way? How do you transfer the, this, this information into a story? How do you translate that? It's quite hard. It needs to have meaning to make your visitor remember the information and to bring it across. You can use means. You can use interpretive means. You could use films, interactive, we already saw very nice examples, uh, AR, VR, even graphical layers. They are all means that could engage your visitor into the story you want to tell. But it's also often quite hard because you need to also use these means in a meaningful way. You need to bring over the message you want to tell. And often what you see that the means that are used are not suitable to tell the story. So how do you employ these means in a meaningful way? Well, what often is forgotten is to design the content. You need to design a content in order to uh, create unforgettable visitor experiences. And it's quite logical that you need to design the content because a museum is a designed place. The location is designed, the architecture is designed, uh, it's designed which objects you're going to use, how they are displayed, uh, also uh, the techniques, the interpretive means, all these things are designed. So why not design the content? Why not start at basic? And that's what we do. We are a content design studio. And uh, content design is a design discipline that focuses on the narrative. And we help museums to tell their story in the best way possible, in the most powerful way, by telling meaningful stories. And by telling meaningful stories, uh, we create unforgettable visitor experiences. And telling meaningful story is also our philosophy. We believe that people need meaningful story to understand the world around them. And what we also believe is that you need to emotionally involve the visitor into that story. Because if you are emotionally involved in it, you remember better the message. It sticks to you. It's also something that the writer author Maya Angelou quoted. She said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. This idea is the basic of, of our method, emotion design. When we're designing exhibition or even the multimedia, we always use this emotion design. And in emotion design, we determine the facts, the meaning, the emotion, and the how. We start with facts. That are the elements of the story you want to tell. So what will I learn as a visitor? What are the elements? Uh, this mostly we do it in combination with the museum because they have the information. They know the facts. Then it's important to know why is it important that I learn about these facts, that I learn about the story? What is the meaning behind this? So you need to determine that. And by having the facts and the meaning, you have your meaningful story. But then it's important that people remember this meaningful story. So you need to attach an emotion. So which emotion? What will I feel when I'm going to experience this interactive or when I'm going to visit the exhibition? 
When you have determined the facts, the meaning, and emotion, then you can go to the how. So not before. Often it's have been before, but then it's not, the, uh, the meaning is not suitable for the story that you want to tell. So in the end, you're going to have a look, how can I tell this emotional and meaningful story in the best way possible? Which kind of means am I going to use? This method, uh, so we often use this method for designing uh, our exhibitions, and we also use it for designing the family exhibits in the National Museum of Qatar, and also in the production of our interactives. Uh, Sarah is going to explain a bit about this uh, exhibition, but before we go in depth, we show, want to show some video footage. Hopefully there is audio, because that makes it a bit nicer. Yeah, there is. <laughs> That was the video. Um, it's really nice to be here. It's also really cool to be translated into Hungarian as I speak. That's never happened to me before. Um, I'm really looking forward to telling you about the family exhibits in Qatar for which we did uh, the content design. Uh, but first, let's zoom out just a bit uh, because, of course, the museum is much, much bigger than just the family exhibits. It's an iconic building. It's built by, uh, it's designed by uh, Jean Nouvel architects. And um, it resembles a desert rose. There are sand crystals that are growing uh, in the desert. It's a very iconic thing for Qatar. And uh, the iconic shape of the building has also dictated uh, a very specific visitor routing because visitors have a one and a half kilometer walk through the museum they start at the geological history of Qatar, moving on to natural history, archaeological history, and it ends in the future. So it's a very extensive, all-encompassing approach to the history of Qatar, and it's almost as if you are following a river, a very long river, uh, through the history and the heritage. And everywhere where the river bends and where there's a quiet corner, that is where the family exhibits are located. So there are six in total, uh, together with Opera Amsterdam, we uh, developed the spatial design and the concepts. And then we also did the media production of uh, some of the family exhibits. Uh, it was a very uh, enticing and uh, nice project to work on for us. Um, because it was very big and also the ambitions were quite high. The idea of the family exhibits being located in the bends of the river really appealed to us, uh, and we wanted to uh, build further on this notion, because it's almost as if there are small gardens along a river where you can sit under the trees with your family, where you can paddle your feet in the water, and where you can have a lovely afternoon um, and, a, and a nice, enjoyable time together. So this has also been the concept for the 
uh, development of both the spatial design and the media design, that these are immersive, pleasant and safe places where families can play and interact uh, almost as if along a riverbed. So for example, if you see the benches here, everywhere there's seating area uh, and you can really uh, come there as a family. Naturally, to design the content, we used our method, which is emotion design. Uh, Denise explained it really well earlier on, so I'll just dive into um, how we applied this for the, um, uh, for the family exhibits. Firstly, the facts. Of course, it's very uh, related to the overall museum because it tells the history uh, and culture of Qatar and its people. That's a very large narrative, and especially for younger visitors, it can feel quite abstract. So um, um, finding the meaning and the relevance for the younger visitor was really important. And that is twofold. Um, firstly, um, it's good to know that a lot of visitors who are uh, there with their family are Qatari people. Um, and often younger children, uh, they don't have a very big historic awareness. Uh, and especially in Qatar, where all the buildings that you see are quite uh, new. Sometimes it's um, hard to, to realize when you're, when you're younger that it's really a very old country uh, and that it has a very rich heritage that you are part of. So we really wanted to uh, convert this, uh, convey this message to the audience that the things that I'm seeing are actually my heritage, I am part of it and I can also contribute to it. And the second thing is that family relations are very important in Qatar. It used to be like that uh, when they were mostly nomadic people and traveling around and your family was also your community. And still nowadays, families are very central to society. And also naturally, the, the people you are visiting the museum with are your own family. So uh, we felt it really important to um, not only to convey the importance of family relations, but also to enhance these family relations and really give families a chance to interact and to have a good day together. And the emotions we wanted to uh, evoke to convey this, this, the meaning of the message uh, and also to engage the visitors are also twofold. Firstly, uh, we wanted people to feel proud of their heritage and to feel that they are part of it and that they can contribute to it. And also we wanted people to feel connected, not only to their own history, but also to the people they are visiting uh, the museum with. So everything that we made, all the content we designed, uh, was aimed at um, evoking these emotions in order to um, get across the meaning of the message and also the factual story of the, the history and the culture of Qatar. Now let's dive into the how, because <laughs> famously we think about that last uh, before, we, uh, before we start designing. And that is threefold. <laughs> we wanted it to be very immersive, to really uh, create a feeling of playing along a rush, lush riverbed, um, like we uh, uh, explained a bit earlier. We wanted it to be very tactile because we wanted visitors to, to become part of the interactives and also to feel like they can change the place where they are, that they are really um, uh, not only passive visitors, but really part of what is happening around them. And thirdly, we wanted it to be very social, to create a sense of connectedness and not only a sense of connectedness, but also to actually reinforce uh, the connection with the people you are with at that moment. I will speed up a bit. <laughs> we are short on time. Um, immersive. Every world is very, uh, every family exhibit is very um, uh, immersive. So there are projections around you you can interact with. You can change the animals that are on the walls. You can approach the fish and they move away from you or they move towards you. So these are really immersive worlds that are very pleasant to be in. And also we wanted to uh, give a sense of exploration, like everywhere you go there's something you can discover and can see. So actually for the toddlers we made a lot of hidden surprises, but they are a big hit with all audiences because people love just walking around and finding uh, small animals and smells and everything. Then we wanted it to be tactile uh, so that visitors can um, 
feel ownership over the heritage and also become part of it. So there's a big pin wall where you can leave your imprint. Uh, there's uh, archaeological vases that you can reconstruct and then it tells you the story of your history. There are um, interactives where you can design your own pottery and then it's being projected um, in the exhibition so you see it around you. And uh, as we mentioned, uh, we wanted to promote uh, intergenerational contact. It was also something that the museum was very eager about. Um, so a lot of the exhibits, you exhibitions or the, um, the interactives, you actually cannot do it on your own. You really need someone else to work together and um, to, uh, to achieve the goal of the game. And this is also, I think, one of the reasons that people really keep coming back, uh, because it's a place where they can um, hang out and enjoy their time as a group. Um, and of course, we were really happy to, to get back this feedback, both from the museum and also from the visitors, because the whole content design was aimed at exactly doing just that. So it's always good to hear uh, when it is working out. Um, and people feel more connected to their own heritage, to their own culture, and also to their fellow visitors. And that is what we aimed for. So it was um, an exciting project. I absolutely advise you to go there. It's not around the corner, <laughs> but it's a wonderful place to be. It's a nice place. Um, Shall we show the movie or is it this? Let's show it quickly. Yeah, and yeah, we okay. are interrupted. So we are showing also some video footage of the Museum of uh, Mozart yeah. about uh, your Mozart yeah. exhibition. <laughs> And maybe it's good to we'll have a break afterwards. We can't go into it very deeply no. because we're a bit short on time. But if you have any questions, do come to us and we'll explain everything that we couldn't present. Yeah, and I will go briefly to the emotion design afterwards. <laughs> In de zomer van 2017 besloot het Mauritshuis om deze buste van Johan Maurits van nassau Sienge niet langer in de foyer te tonen. Een paar maanden later zorgde dit voor ophef. Er sprake van een Twitterstorm. Het museum zou een nationale held van zijn voetstuk hebben gestoten. En als museum moesten we hier iets mee. Het is de taak van het museum om te zorgen dat de feiten kloppen. Hoezeer de interpretatie ook beweegt. In de tentoonstelling is dit bewogen beeld het dragende concept waarmee we samen met de bezoeker op zoek gaan naar Johan Maurits. We hebben een diverse groep mensen uitgenodigd om hun verhaal te delen bij de kunstwerken in de tentoonstelling. In totaal gaat het om 46 verschillende auteurs die vanuit hun expertise, hun achtergrond, hun perspectief kunnen delen bij de kunstwerken. En al die bijdragen, teksten en meningen zijn te lezen op iPads. Zonder volgorde, zonder chronologie, zonder rode draad. Een bezoeker die kan zelf lezen, kijken en bedenken wat hij ziet. Een lief meisje uit de 17e eeuw? Of een door slaaf gemaakte geproduceerd luxe product? Een trotse legerleider? Of een besmaakt lachende slavenhandelaar? De tentoonstelling gaat over Jan. We'll break it off because <laughs> it's very nice to see. Um, at the end of this movie, uh, the curator Lea from the Mautzhuis raised a challenge that we faced. Um, this exhibition is about Joel Mautz, who is the name giver of, this, of the museum, but also has a history as a national hero, but with a slave trading past. And there was very um, much public debate going on because the museum removed the statue to showcase it somewhere else and there was a lot of commotion so we uh, it was a starting point to creating this exhibition and we can content design and emotion design this what the facts are is that you realize that history is constantly shifting how you see things right now is different than how you saw it 50 years ago or how you see it in 50 years time and why is this important well it's important for a museum that you stick to the facts. Between all these opinions, you need to showcase the facts as a museum, because that is what you know, and then you can take place into this debate. And 
because of all these opinions and of also these shifting images, um, the emotion is contemplation and awareness. Awareness that your perspective is just one of many, and your perspective is also changing because of the, how the things you see or the new information you get. And how did we do that? Well, it was quite a layered and complex story. So we made also use of layered means. Different enchanting installations show the facts, but also the perspectives. So you got a really, really exciting exhibition where you could marvel, you could read, you could watch, you could even investigate, examine the objects. And already started with a big Twitter wall where the Twitter messages from the, the public debate was projected on it. And it was really a fierce introduction on the subject. But then if you follow the route, then the first thing you encounter is a graphical layer to show the facts. So you really are uh, introduced in real, the real information, what we know about Joel Mauritz and his time in Dutch Brazil. It's also being really objectively presented without any color or images, so it's really our facts. Um, what we also made is a real wall to wall projection where we also showed the, the story of Joel Maurits, and we combined here the facts and the opinions. So the facts were given in text, but op the opinions were given in the images. And this contradictionary or conflict combination made to Fister realize what his opinion was about the matter. As was shown in the movie, we created um, not just one object label, but several. So we invited different authors who gave their opinion on the artworks. So again, uh, many perspectives and visions were given to the visitor. And you could also uh, get to know these uh, authors by pressing on their name and reading their biography. And this exhibition was also a starting point of a real research project that the uh, has initiated with the different universities, so they really are starting to research all the facts and get the information correctly. And he ended the exhibition, going, going really quickly <laughs> because of the time, with a nice artistic installation, the Sugar Palace, because at Mao's house was nicknamed already in the 17th century the Sugar Palace, because it was presumed that Joe Mao could afford the house based on the sugar plantations that he had in Dutch Brazil. So again, it's really a perspective, a vision on how people see, see him and his life. Uh, and there was also a tablet with text where you could read the author's perspective on it. Um, so we really content designed and emotion designed this exhibition. And Emily Gordenk, the former director of the Mouse has quoted that um, yeah, it's a mandate as a public institution to offer as many perspectives as possible. And it's up to you as a visitor to form your own opinions. We realize that there's a very large gray area between the two pools, so between the two extremes. And that's why we want to be as a museum. And there was really well be emotion design. So we want to show all these different perspectives and where the place is for the museum, that they should give the facts. Um, so the next time when you're going to design an exhibition or a multimedia, think about designing your content and use emotion design to invoke the emotional visitor and engage your visitor into the story. Thank you very much. <laughs>